All right, let's start talking about vector operations. The One of the simpler vector operations is called scalar multiplication, and it simply involves multiplying a vector by a scalar. So if I were to take vector v uh, right here and multiply it times a scalar, remember that a scalar has only magnitude. So by multiplying a vector times a scalar, you don't affect the direction of the vector, you only affect the magnitude of the, of the vector. In other words, you affect the length. So 2v just means that it's going to be twice as long. Negative 2v means it's twice as long, but it's also going in a negative direction. So I say it's not going to affect the direction unless, of course, it's going to affect the positive versus negative direction. One third v would just be a third as long. Now, arithmetically, if I wanted to do scalar multiplication, it's just a matter of distributing. If I take the vector v and multiply it times the number k, we're just going to take that number k and distribute it into the vector. So instead of k being multiplied by vector a, b, it's really k times a, k times b. And that's all you have to do. Super easy. Let's try it out. So give these three a try. So the vector was 2, negative 5. 3v would give us 6, negative 15. 2 times 3, negative 5 times 3. Uh, negative 2v would be negative 4, 10. 2 times negative 2, negative 5 times negative 2. And then uh, Last one is one tenth v, so that would be one fifth, negative one half. Just like uh, how easy scalar multiplication is, vector addition just as easy. If I want to add two vectors together, that's just a matter of adding the x components and adding the y components. If I want to add vector a, b to c, d, you just have to add a and c, add b and d. Now this right here is called a resultant. Resultant. When you add two vectors together, it is referred to as a resultant vector. If I take the magnitude and direction direction of one vector and combine it with the magnitude and direction of another vector, you're going to get a new vector with a new magnitude and a new direction, and that is the resultant of those two vectors. This concept is going to come up uh, much more in depth later on. Right now, we can just practice it a little bit. But before we do that, let's get a geometric interpretation of vector addition. We call it the parallelogram method. If you wanted to geometrically add two vectors together, in other words, if I took the vector u and the vector v and I wanted to add these two together uh, on a coordinate plane, it's really just a matter of taking either one of these vectors and attaching it to the end of the other one. In other words, if you thought about a number line, if I considered a number line like this, let's pretend that's a line. If I start at 0 and I want to add 7 plus 3, well, I'd start at 0. I don't start at 7. I'd technically start at 0, and I'd go to 7. And then if I wanted to add 3 more, I don't go back to 0 and then add 3. I add 3 from the 7 in order to get to the 10. Well, it's the same thing with vectors. If I take two vectors, I shouldn't put the v back here at the origin. I should take that vector v and stick it up here at the end of u. Now I could either do it that way or I could do it the other way because addition can work in either direction. I can either take u plus v or v plus u. Either way, the resultant vector is just the vector that connects the origin to the endpoint, which is why we call it the parallelogram method because we have a handy dandy nice little parallelogram here. Now for us though, we're going to go ahead and just do this arithmetically. It's easy enough. Why not just do it that way? So if I want to subtract vectors r minus s, remember subtraction is just adding a negative. So I can just do it the same way. So r minus s is really just 2 minus negative 3 and 8 minus 6, which gives us 5, 2. For the second and third, we can do it very similarly. Uh, if you haven't tried it all already, go ahead and pause the video, try them on your own, and then hit play. So we've got some scalar multiplication snuck in there as well as the vector addition. So first thing I got to do is take r and double it. So I'll get 4, 16. Then I can take s and triple it. Negative 9, 18. And now I'm ready to add it together. Negative 5, 34. Same basic idea with c. I'll take s, which is negative 3, 6, and subtract 4r, which is going to be 8, 32. And I get negative 11, negative 26. 
Here's another one. Why don't you go ahead and give this one a try? I'm asking for the absolute value of 1 half r plus s. So again, just follow the order of operations. We'll start on the inside, 1 half r plus s. Well, 1 half of r is 1, 4. s is still negative 3, 6. Add it together, I get negative 2, 10. Now I want the absolute value, and again, if you said the absolute value was 2, 10, you need to go back to the beginning of this lesson and start over because you have not been paying attention. Absolute value does not mean make things positive. Absolute value means how far is this coordinate, negative 2, 10, from 0. In other words, what is the length of that vector? And we do that by using the Pythagorean theorem. So it's negative 2 squared plus 10 squared, which is 4 plus 100 which is 104, square root of 104, or 10.198. All right, let's talk about unit vectors. Unit, in mathematics, unit means one. All right, when you're talking about units, like in measurement, feet, inches, centimeters, whatever, what you're actually doing is defining how much is one. If I say the unit is inch, inches, then that means one means one inch. So we've used this concept before with when we were talking about the unit circle. The unit circle is a circle of radius one, which is why we called it the unit circle because it defined how much one was. With unit vectors, they're vectors of magnitude one, not angle one, but magnitude one. Now the reason we would use a unit vector is to convey direction. Often it can be useful uh, you know if I wanted to convey magnitude I can just use a scalar. But if I wanted to convey direction, a vector is going to give me both magnitude and direction. So if we make it a unit vector, we're simply leveling the playing field as far as magnitude goes. So that means direction is the only thing that's really significant about it. So that's why we use unit vectors. Now there's a few things called a standard unit vector. Depending how many dimensions you're in, that's how many standard unit vectors you're going to have. Now at this point, we're sticking with two-dimensional uh, geometry and trigonometry. So there's just going to be two standard unit vectors that we have to worry about. The first one is the standard unit vector i, and that's just the vector 1, 0, which just means it's going to the right one unit. So there's my standard unit vector i. That's, in other words, is this is the x standard unit vector. j is my y standard unit vector, 0, 1. In other words, if I'm going in the j direction, I'm going up. If I'm going in the i direction, I'm going to the right. Now, if we happen to be in three dimensions, then we would have i, j, and k. For those of you who are, are, are taking physics or have taken physics, this is where we would jump into the concept of the right-hand rule, i, j, k, torque, and all that business. But for us, we're just going to stick to i and j as our standard unit vectors. Now, the beautiful thing about standard unit vectors is it allows an alternative to component form. For example, if I take the component form 2, 5. Now, bear with me for a second. Believe me or don't, but 2, 5 is actually just the summation of 2, 0 and 0, 5. If I were to add those vectors together, I would get 2, 5. Well, why would I do that? Again, just bear with me for a second. I could keep going and pull out the 2 and the 5 and say that it's really 2 times 1, 0 plus 5 times 0, 1. Well, why would I do that? Well, now I do have a reason to do that. 1, 0 is the i vector. 0, 1 is the j vector. So the component form 2, 5 is equivalent to the linear combination of standard unit vectors 2i plus 5j. So it's quite common to uh, jump around between this notation and this notation. They are exactly the same thing. They mean exactly the same thing. If I have a component form AB, I could just as easily write it as AI plus BJ. They are the same thing. All right. Now, careful not to jump around uh, in the during the course of answering a question. If the information is presented to you in component form, then answer it in component form. If the information is presented as a linear combination, then answer it as a linear combination. Now, if you're more comfortable with one format than the other during your work, you're more than welcome to use either one of these formats. But stick with, if you're asked a question in a particular language, then answer the question in the exact same language.
All right, so let's look at this. Given vector v is 2i plus 3j and vector w is 3i minus 4j, find the vector u that is in the same direction as w with the magnitude of v. Hopefully this direction, this question looks, looks familiar. Why don't you go ahead and give it a try and hit play when you're ready. So we addressed this, this exact same question a little bit earlier, except earlier it was presented using component form. Now it's in uh, linear combination form that doesn't matter they're the same thing 2i plus 3j if you wanted to say 2 3 and 3i minus 4j is really 3 negative 4 if you wanted to think of these as component forms as 2 3 and 3 negative 4 you are more than welcome to do so it does not matter we're gonna start by finding the magnitude of V which is 2 squared plus 3 squared which is root 13 and then the direction of W so inverse tangent of negative 4 over 3 we're in the fourth quadrant, so we'll add 360 to get 306.869. Store that for A, rewrite the component form, and I have my final answer. So notice uh, my question was asked in, as a linear combination, and I answered it as a linear combination. Uh, I could have written it as a component form, but because I wasn't asked in the question, the format in the question wasn't component form, I'm not going to write my answer in component form. Write your answer in the same way, in the same format that the question asked.